It's the 14th of May and my name is Jack Watts, uh, Lead Market Analyst for Serious and Seeds within AHDB Market Intelligence. We take the opportunity today to take a look back at some of the key fundamentals we've seen um, in the 14-15 grey marketing year, a look back at some of the issues that were flagged at the Grey Market Outlook Conference uh, back in October and a look through to see how these will, um, could well pan out as we head into the new crop season. Now really the 2014 grain crop around the world was about really a big crop getting bigger and if we contrast where USDA estimates were in October and where they are now in May for the old crop we've seen um, some growth in both global maize production estimates and global wheat um, production estimates so really big crops growing bigger and that big supply fundamental weighing down um, on prices. Now the EU was, was no stranger to this and we saw growth and the estimations behind EU um, wheat and broader grain um, production. Remember also um, coming into the season the, the unique element of what was happening in, in, in Europe was characterised by poor French quality um, but actually what we were starting to see was a very weak euro against the dollar and it's almost that weak euro that really did a lot to help balance supply and demand um, in, in Europe. So we look at this first chart and this is um, what was produced back in October 2014 at the Grain Market Outlook Conference and this tells us about U European or EU wheat supply and demand forecast for the season ahead. The black diamonds there show you the expectation of the, of the growth in that stocks to use ratio in Europe off of the very low base and at levels not seen for several years. If we update these numbers and focus purely on the stocks to use ratio now, um, we can see that yes, stocks to use of European wheat is expected to grow year on year, but that growth is much less than it was forecast to be um, a few months ago, simply because of Europe's blistering export pace you know, and record export pace really offsetting those advances in the size of the European crop. And that's really, really important. And what currency is doing is it's preventing a build up of of too much of a build-up of stocks in, of wheat in the EU. That's more of an issue that can be reserved potentially for the US market. So that's the plus side of currency. The weak euro has helped prevent this mass build-up of stocks of wheat in, the, in, in Europe. Currency for the UK is, is a complicated beast and um, even back at the Grain Market Outlook Conference in October this trend was very apparent that we had a, a strengthening pound against the euro and that was really hitting the competitiveness of UK wheat and broader grains um, into the key euro denominated market where the bulk of UK exports of grain go to. The saviour though was that we were seeing a depreciation of the pound um, against the US dollar. So while UK exports were becoming less competitive into the eurozone to the global market, um, we were becoming more competitive, helped by the currency, helped by that weakening of the pound um, against the, the US dollar. And we've got recent evidence of that now. If we bring up the next chart, and you can show how those trends have panned out over the last few weeks um, and, and months, really seeing the strength of the pound against the euro. Admittedly, you could argue it's plateaued now at the moment. And also, you could see um, that some of that weakness against the dollar has sort of been undone by a little bit of rallying of, of, of the pound. But that's really fundamentally changed the, how the UK was going to export its surpluses or a proportion of acceptances um, in, into external markets um, this season. And we've got recent evidence, of course, of news of UK wheat cargoes heading as far as field um, as Asia, really facilitated as well by very low f international freight rates on the back of low oil prices um, as well. One of really the wild cards we were picking up on back in the autumn was really the threat of El Nino and what that might well do to um, say Australian wheat production, broader grain production. Um, we've seen the impacts of what El Nino can do um, to Australian grain production back in 2006 and broader drought in 2007, really decimated yields for a country that's not necessarily a big producer, but it but more than punches above its weight in terms of the share of global exports, so is a key um, uh, provider. Um, El Nino was a wild card. It didn't materialise through 2014 into 2015 in terms of impacting um, grain production and availability. Um, but now you will have noticed that El Nino is back in the headlines more generally now. Um, and there's a growing level of confidence that there's an El Nino event occurring and going to continue. And so this puts, as we um, flagged up in yesterday's Grain Market Daily report, uh, the, the market has to be aware of this risk going forward. and 
potential implications that El Nino could have. The current projections suggest that um, from a price point of view, El Nino can potentially have more of an impact on the barley supply and demand side of things rather than, than wheat because barley is starting from a, uh, from a global point of view, is starting from a tighter situation, is more sensitive to the impacts of weather than say the wheat market. So that's going to be interesting um, to, to keep an eye on that, particularly bear in mind that barley is becoming recently over, over the last few years uh, a more important crop um, for, for the UK in the rotation more and more farmers finding favour with barley to help with the rotation, dealing with black grass, for instance, and certainly just competing on, from an economic base in its, in its own right, particularly when grain prices are low, that's where lower cost crops such as barley come into their um, own a little bit. Moving away from the grains, we, we have to consider what's going on with oilseed rape. And again, uh, back in the autumn at the Grain Market Agri Conference, um, the suggestion of Obviously, rep being at a bit of a crossroads given um, this, the big decline in prices that we've seen in recent years. Th that message very much remains the same. Um, obviously, rep has to be looked at as a crop of high risk and which requires high reward. Um, the risk element remains in, on the production side, um, but the rewards clearly don't appear to be there in terms of price. This is going to ask a strategic question of the industry where do we go with obviously rep going forward? It will still like have a position in, in many rotations possibly less intensively than we've seen um, in, in recent years. Looking forward, um, we're starting to see more and more projections of what 2015 will, will throw at the market. Currently, there's a very optimi optimistic mood about what production will look like in 2015. There have been no real weather events, but we need to remember that we're still in the middle of May and there's still a, a, a long timeline of weather that many growing crops have to go through before we can be massively confident about the supplies. We've seen um, very early estimates or forecasts of what supply and demand will look like in 15, 16 and really those estimates look too close to call. For, for wheat for instance the projection is for a small surplus and for maize a small deficit um, but as we see, saw in 2014, 2013 global Big crops got bigger, but we know that weather can um, play it or does play a key part in this and can quickly um, cause reductions in these forecasts. So it's very much one to watch, and it's very important that we avoid becoming too complacent. There are a number of watch points in in, in the market going forward. Thank you very much.